Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to yet another tutorial in our little tutorial series here. In this one, we're going to be spicing up our composition just a little bit more because we're going to be adding a Monstera plant asset into our scene here. It's going to be placed to the right side of our sofa here. And as we're doing that, as we're adding that extra element into our scene, we're going to be exploring a couple of additional workflows, such as, for example, how do you work with FBX uh, imports in Cinema 4D? And then we're also going to be taking a look at how to uh, set up basic plant materials. So we're going to be playing with translucency and all that cool stuff. And then last but not least, we're also going to be taking a look at how you can add round edges to your objects without actually having to model them. Okay, so it's going to be an information packed tutorial. And so it's going to be a bit longer, but we really hope you're going to learn something new here and we really hope you're going to enjoy it. So with all that said, how about we go to work here? So as our first step, how about we take a look at the Monstera plant asset that we'll be working with here. So it's this asset that you see right here. And this asset, you know, it looks like a really nicely, properly modeled plant asset. It has really nice topology. But if you take a closer look at its materials here, well, you're going to be able to notice that these materials are basically default gray materials with no textures or no reflections in them. Okay. So that's how FBX assets are typically going to import into Cinema 4D. And that means you're probably going to have to recreate pretty much all of the materials that you see here from scratch. And that is a pretty common workflow for whenever you're dealing with assets that you've bought on third party stores out there, because a lot of the times those assets have not been modeled in Cinema 4D. And so uh, the way that you import them into Cinema 4D is with the help of the FBX file format. And that file format is not really that effective for transferring over materials, unfortunately. So this is a pretty common workflow when dealing with assets. So uh, that's why we've decided to include it into our tutorial series here. Now, obviously, if you're using uh, the Chaos Cosmos, okay, uh, in that case, working with assets is a lot easier. You just uh, download the one you like, you import it into your scene, and, and it's going to come in with all of the materials already fully fleshed out. You are able to tweak them. So there's a lot less work with these. But, you know, sometimes you do want to get assets elsewhere and that's perfectly fine. But, you know, in those cases, this is probably going to be how your workflow is going to look like. OK, now, the only thing that we've changed here uh, when, once we've imported this Monstera plan asset is that we've actually gone in and we've replaced standard Cinema 4D materials with these V-Ray node materials. And we did that just to save us some time here because that is uh, really nothing that uh, is a very interesting or uh, hard to do. And so we just, you know, we made sure that all of those materials got replaced. All right. So um, now that we know how our Monstera plant asset looks like, how about we uh, copy it into our main scene? So we're just going to select it here in the object manager, and we're going to uh, copy it over into our main scene. Then we're going to position it. So we're just going to put it to the right side of our sofa here. All right, so kind of like this. And let's also make sure that it does not intersect with the sofa. So I'll just pull it to the right a little bit. All right, cool. Then uh, let's bring up the VFB. We already have the interactive render running, as you can see. And uh, before we actually go in and we start messing with the materials, let's just organize our scene a little bit better here. So let's take all these uh, materials that came with the Monstera plant asset and let's just add them to a new layer, a layer that we're going to call Monstera plant layer. Okay. Organizing your scenes is always cool. It makes working in your scenes a lot easier. And, you know, it's just going to make you cooler as an artist. Okay. So uh, with that done, uh, let's uh, jump out of our camera here. Okay. And let's uh, get closer to our Monstera plant here. Uh, and let's maybe focus on this uh, topmost leaf right here. So let's get closer to it sort of like this, and then let's try and set up a nice little region render just so we focus all that rendering power uh, on that topmost leaf because this is the leaf that we're going to be uh, materializing first here. Okay. Okay. Now, if I try and select the uh, topmost leaf here, the one that we want to work on, you're going to notice that we've basically selected the entire Monstera plant, say for the vase and the, uh, or the pot and the pebbles and the soil there. 
okay and so all these leaves all these stems they're just one object one mesh and you can clearly see that if you take a look at the object manager here now that's not a problem uh, just because fortunately we have all these selection tags here and if we just cycle through them you're going to see that they select individual sort of components of this monstera plant um, asset and so we can just cycle through them until we get to that top most leaf that we're gonna uh, materialize first here so once we find that selection tag let's re let's remember its name so it's called the zag monstera leaf 06 selection tag and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cycle through the material tags here and we're gonna search for the one that is being constrained by that particular selection tag okay so let's just cycle through these and there we go we found the correct one so uh, as you can see this particular material tag is being constrained by the Zag Monster Relief 06 selection tag. And the material that it's constraining is this Zag Monster Relief 06. So the naming conventions here are pretty cool and they can make our lives a little bit easier because as you can see, the selection tag uh, names match to the materials that they're confining. Okay. So um, now that we know which material we're dealing with, let's just uh, select it from our material manager here and let's open up the node editor because now we're going to go to work with this material. Okay. So uh, the first component that we're going to tackle here is going to be the diffuse color component. And with this particular asset came a bunch of textures. And if we take a look at them, well, <laughs> here they are. Right, so there's a bunch of different textures. And what's really cool about this particular asset is that the naming conventions are really solid. So if we take a look at the names here, you're gonna see that uh, this texture right here is named Zag Monstero Leaf 06, which perfectly matches to the material we're working with here. Okay, so it, this map right here is the one for our material. And the little sort of text bit at the end here denotes what kind of a texture this is. So this one is a diffuse texture, and that's exactly the one we're going to want to plug into our diffuse color slot. Okay, so let's load it up here, and then let's just plug it into the diffuse color slot, just like that. And there we go. <laughs> we're making progress here. But now, now, uh, you're probably almost immediately going to be able to notice one thing that's a little bit odd here. So if we take a look at our leaf as it is right now, you're going to notice that it's actually appearing to reflect uh, something, right? It's appearing, it looks like it has reflections enabled. But if we go into our material here, and if we go into the reflection channel, you're going to see that the reflections are actually disabled. So what is happening here? Well, if we uh, open up this diffuse texture, Okay, if we just take a closer look at it, well, you're going to immediately be able to notice that the reflections are kind of baked into the diffuse texture that we have in front of us here. So whenever this photo, this scan of the sleeve was taken, uh, the reflections were actually part of it. Okay, and that's not what you want to see with your diffuse maps, with your diffuse bitmaps, because if you're after it, realism if you're after creating realistic materials you don't want reflections to be baked in to your diffuse textures because obviously these are the reflections that were there when they've taken this photo when they've taken this scan and they're not the reflections that would be there in our scene here okay so if we take a look at our rendered image these reflections are not the reflections that are coming from our scene here but the reflections that are baked into the diffuse texture OK, and that's typically well, that's really not what you want when you're when you're trying to create realistic materials. But but sometimes in production, these are just the kind of assets that you're going to have to make do with. OK, so we're going to show you we're going to use this asset. And we're going to show you that you can still do a lot with these kinds of assets. OK. OK, so that's kind of it for the diffuse color component. We, we've got it all set up there. And um, let's focus on the next important bit here. So if we take a closer look at our leaf, you're going to be able to notice that sort of towards the edges here, we have this solid block of green color sort of sticking out at us. OK, so um, if we also take a look at the uh, holes here in our leaf, you can see that they're not really holes. They, they just have this solid color on them. OK, so uh, what's happening here? Well, typically with 
pretty much most of the plant leaf assets that you're going to be dealing with. Okay, uh, to conserve on the modeling time and to conserve on the polygon count, you're going to want to use opacity maps to cut out these details, essentially. Okay, now why is that? Well, if you take a look at our uh, Monstera plant uh, asset here, you're going to see that it's relatively low poly. Okay, there's not that many polygons in here. But now if you wanted to go in and you wanted to model all of these details, as you can imagine, uh, you would have to really up that polygon count, especially with these holes here, right? So um, that's not a big problem for a single Monstera plant asset, but if you had uh, like a tree with a lot of leaves, and if you would want to model all of these details on those leaves, that could really skyrocket the polygon count, and that would slow down uh, the rendering process potentially, uh, you would need a lot more system memory, and so on and so forth. Okay, plus, plus, all of these parts here, because they're of these organic shapes, right, they're really time-consuming to model. Okay, so that's why you're going to be with pretty much uh, all of the uh, leaf assets out there, you're going to be uh, dealing with this opacity workflow that we're going to showcase next year. Okay, so the opacity workflow is basically real simple. You just have an opacity map that you plug into the opacity color slot. Now, our Monstera plant leaf asset here came with proper opacity maps. There are these maps that you see right here. And they're just black and white maps that we're going to use as cutouts. Okay, so... Um, Let's uh, let's load up this uh, opacity map. Let's just copy this bitmap here and load up the uh, opacity map into it. Okay. And now let's just plug it into the opacity color slot. All right. And just like that, look at that. We've got all of those nice details in there. The holes actually became proper holes and the entire leaf looks great, honestly. Right. <laughs> Save for these uh, reflections that are baked into the <laughs> diffuse bitmap there. But other than that, look at that. This leaf looks really great. Right. Right. And that's the opacity map workflow. That's kind of all that there is to it. Maybe if we can just offer a bit of a production tip. Typically, you don't want you don't want your opacity maps to be filtered. So what you want to do to speed up the rendering process a little bit is you want to lower the filter blur and you can lower it down to zero see if that works for you. Now, for still images, typically this is not going to be a problem, but if you do notice some artifacting or if you're dealing with animations, well, in that case, um, if you notice any shimmering or artifacting, just up the filter blur a little bit until that um, artifacting and shimmering is gone. Okay, but for us here, a value of zero uh, where we're effectively disabling the filter blur works just fine, as you can see. Okay, so next up, let's tackle the actual proper reflections on our material here. So we're going to enable reflections. OK, just make them fully white. And obviously now we have these glossy reflections here that, well, really, um, we, we're going to want to play around with them a little bit. So um, this asset came with reflection and glossiness maps, but they're not really that detailed. So we are not going to use them. Um, if you if you're happy with the glossiness maps that come with your asset, well, just plug them into the glossiness slot, and then if need be, tweak it. We can showcase that workflow in one of the earlier tutorials. But in our case here, uh, we're not really that pleased with the glossiness maps that came with this asset, so we're gonna come up with our own ones. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy this bitmap node, and I'm gonna load in an imperfection map that we all know and love at this point. So it's gonna be this one right here. I'm just gonna load it in, and then. If I plug this uh, imperfection map into the reflection gloss in the slot, well, now we're breaking those reflections up a little bit. Okay, but as you can see, the effect is just too strong. So we're gonna we're gonna tweak things a little bit here. At this point, as you probably know already, you could bring in a remap node, you could bring in a layered node, or you could bring in a combined float node. That's actually the one that I'm going to go with here. And we're just going to plug the imperfection map into it. And then the entire setup, we're going to plug into the glass in the slot. And so now we can start tweaking things a little bit more in detail. So the first thing that I like to do is I just like to lower the mixing down to 0%. And I like to input that base value for my uh, glossiness. So let's try a value of 0 0.9. That might actually be a little too glossy. Yes, indeed. The reflections are just a little too glossy for me. Uh, so let's lower the value down to 0 0.8. 
And I think this might actually work here, because from my experience, at least, Monstera plant leaves are typically surprisingly glossy. So I think this is going to work just fine for us here. All right. OK, so um, now at this point, uh, I just want to up the mix strength here so that we start mixing in that imperfection map in there. So let's up the mix strength to 40 percent. Let's see how that's looking. And this might be just a little too intense for me. Let's take a look at uh, these other parts of the uh, of the of the leaves here. OK, let's see how they reflect things. And I think this might be just a little too strong of an effect. So let's lower the mix strength down to 30 percent or so. We just want to break those reflections up just a little bit, just make them just a little bit imperfect. Hopefully you can see that we're doing just that right here. And obviously we could still play with these settings, but I think what we have in front of us here right now is going to work just fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, that kind of take care of the uh, reflections for our material here. And next up, uh, what we're going to want to tweak is the bump map, or we're going to want to play with the bump map. So. Again, this asset came with bump maps, but they're not really detailed enough. So we're just going to come up with our own again. And what I'm going to do uh, here is I'm just going to take this imperfection map. And I'm going to plug it into the bump map slot right here. And um, oh, obviously, the bump map effect is going to be just way too strong. So let's lower it down to maybe 0.1 centimeters. Let's see how that is looking. And it's obviously still too strong, so let's lower it down to 0 0.01 centimeters. Okay, maybe at this point we could lower the opacity on the denoiser, just so we don't get a denoised image in front of us, uh, just so we can see the details a little bit better. And as you can see, there's some just nice uh, surface imperfections here that we're adding, and they look pretty great. Maybe we could just uh, bump the strength up a little bit to 0 0.0125 centimeters. And I think that's going to look great. It's a subtle effect, but it looks really cool, I think. Okay. All right. So with that done, uh, we can start tackling the translucent component of our plant material here, of our plant leaf material. And that's a really important component because every plant leaf out there has some sort of translucency to it. Okay. Now, if you don't know what translucency is, just feel free to search for the term online and immediately you're going to come up with a ton of really cool examples here. Let's maybe open up this one. And so translucency basically means that the light uh, is entering the leaf. It's scattering inside its volume and then it's sort of coming out on the other side as well. And then th that's when you get this translucent look going. And this is a really important property if you're into making realistic looking leaves. Okay. So if we just take a look at maybe at another example here, this is, I think this is actually a render here, but you can clearly see how that leaf translucency looks like. It's a really defining characteristics of plant leaf materials, pretty much all of them out there. Okay. So that's what we're going to be setting up next year. And the way we're going to set it up is we're going to uh, go into our material here. We're going to go under the refraction channel. And in here we have this translucency rollout. OK, so now immediately we would probably be tempted to set the translucency type to subsurface scattering. And that would be incorrect. Why is that? Well, let's inspect our asset here. OK, let's inspect uh, our model here. So. If we take a look at our model, you're going to be able to very quickly notice that this leaf is basically made up of these single sided polygons. OK, so there's actually no internal volume to our leaf. It's basically this two dimensional thing. Right. And so if you wanted to do uh, subsurface scattering like this right now, well, the light would hit the leaf, but then it would have no internal volume, no insights to scatter in. And so that would not really work properly, as you can imagine. So what you want to do first here for these types of assets, and typically most plant assets you're going to be dealing with are going to be modeled like this because, uh, you know, if you're dealing with plants and especially if you're dealing with tree leaves, uh, you know, there's a ton of leaves on trees. And if you were to actually model some sort of an internal volume, you would basically just double the polygon count. And that can really skyrocket if you have a lot of, leaves on your plant stand, as you can imagine, right? So um, what you want to do here is you just want to take the refract thin walled checkbox here to on. Okay. Uh, and now 
what this is going to do is it's basically going to tell V-Ray to simulate some sort of an internal volume. Okay, and so basically, even though this is a basically a two-dimensional <laughs> model here, uh, V-Ray is going to be like, okay, there's some thickness to it. We're going to simulate it. All right. All right. And now once you've ticked this uh, checkbox to on, you can turn on subsurface scattering just like that. Okay. Now, um, if we uh, just maybe more strategically position our camera here, just so that we're looking at the backside of our leaf here, and also uh, we want to make sure that uh, that exterior lighting is hitting the leaf pretty hard, which it is here. Um, and so now you're immediately going to be able to see that we're um, we're dealing with a bit of a odd looking material at the moment. Okay, so that's because the next thing that we're going to have to properly set up here is the scatter color now we could input it here with the color chooser okay but there's a more uh there's a there's a more proper method to do that if you will well not proper but a method that will make this asset look even more realistic okay so let's bring up the uh node editor here again and uh what you typically want to do with the scatter color is you want to plug in a proper scatter color map into it now if you don't have it and we don't have it for our asset here, you can kind of devise one on your own. Now, it's not going to be the most proper translucency scatter color map, but it's going to get the job done really well, as you'll see. So to set that up, what we'll need to do here is we're just going to want to uh, go under the uh, color node, uh, co color folder here, and we're going to want to bring in a color correction node. Okay. And then we're going to plug in this diffuse map into the uh, color correction node. And then the color correction node, we're going to plug into the scatter color node. Now, why are we doing this? Well, with the scatter color, you're basically uh, defining the color that's inside the leaf. So you're defining the color for that internal volume. And with uh, most leaves out there, not all of them, but sort of most, I suppose, it does depend on, on the type of leaf that you're working with, but most of them kind of, uh, mo most of the uh, insides of those leaves kind of look like uh, the outsides, but maybe they're just a little bit warmer on the inside and maybe just a little bit more saturated. Okay. Now, sometimes they're not going to be as warm on the inside. Maybe they're going to be even more warm on the inside. It does depend on the leaf that you're trying to recreate, but typically, typically this is a pretty, uh, pretty common setup. So you just make the insides a little bit warmer and maybe just a little bit more saturated. Okay, and so if you take a look at our interactive render here, you can immediately start seeing that our leaf looks a lot more translucent already. So that's pretty cool. But uh, now we're going to want to play with the subsurface scattering amount parameter here as well. Okay, so right now it's at uh, one, which means this is a really intensely translucent material and it's probably just way too intense. So we're probably going to want to lower the amount here to a more reasonable value, such as 0 0.25. I think that might look better. And a small workflow tip at this point, uh, what you can do here is uh, you can play around with the V-Rays uh, history list. So if you just scoot this menu over here, okay, you can play around with the history list. Now, if these icons are grayed out for you, uh, no worries, just go under options here. VFB settings, go under history here and make sure that history is enabled and that you have a history folder that you're pointing at. Okay. Once you have all this set up, just hit save and close. Well, not save, save and close. And you're going to be able to store the image that's in front of you right now in the, in the uh, VFB. You're going to be able to store it and then you can do an A and B comparison. Okay. Um, with the image that is being rendered in the VFB right now. So if we now lower the subsurface scattering amount to zero, so we're going to effectively going to disable it, you can now immediately see, uh, well, you can now immediately have a really cool comparison of how the effect looks like when it's turned off and when it's turned on. Okay. So this can be really useful. And as you can see, that translucency really makes this leaf <laughs> be more realistic looking. OK, and it's that easy to set up, as you've seen. Right. Right. Cool. Uh, so let's delete this image from the history li list here. Let's uh, let's collapse that uh, window there or that menu. And let's make sure we've re-enabled subsurface scattering here. OK. OK, 
And so that's that's how we set up our leaf here. Okay, so this is obviously just one leaf, but it is looking pretty cool. And what we're going to do next is we're just going to apply the same exact workflow, the same exact steps to the rest of the leaf materials that we have on our Monstera plant here. Now, we're not going to showcase doing that to you just because the workflow, again, it's going to be exactly the same. We're just going to use different textures for these different leaves. And that's really the only thing that is going to change. The workflow will be identical. So just to save on some time, us take all these repetitive steps here. We're just going to fast forward to when we have this all done. Okay, so we've done exactly what we said we were going to do here. We've applied that same workflow, those same exact steps to the rest of the leaf materials here, including the stem uh, materials as well. Same exact steps, just different textures. Okay, that's all that we did here. Then uh, we sort of, to kind of finish off the, uh, the asset itself, okay, we've also created a pebbles material. It's nothing special about it, just a diffuse map, uh, reflection glassiness maps, and a bump map plugged into it. We did the same with the soil or the ground material here. Maybe one thing worth noting about this one is that we didn't have a glossiness map for it, but we do have the reflections enabled for it, uh, just because, you know, every material in the real world is reflective, even soil, even ground. It's just that the glossiness is really low. So maybe that's worth noting there. And now before we start concluding this tutorial, there's one more really cool workflow that we would like to showcase to you. And that is how you can use the viewing materials round edges functionality to round the edges on your object without actually having to do anything to your models okay without actually having to go in and model those round edges and so let's demo that workflow as we're working on this pot material right here because you can see the pot material is still not done yet so let's just get closer to our um to our pot here so kind of like this okay and immediately you're going to be able to see that well let's get just a little bit more closer to it and immediately you're going to be able to see that these edges here are unrealistically sharp they're not uh, chamfered or however you want to call them they're just these perfectly sharp edges as you can see and that's really not realistic you want uh, your edges to be like they are in re in the real world and in the real world Pretty much every edge you see out there, no, no matter how sharp, okay, they're not this perfectly sharp, okay? They're always just a little bit beveled, just a little bit rounded out. Now, you could go in and you could model, you could bevel these edges here, but you can also do that from right inside the VRA material. So let's select uh, the VRA material for our pot here. And then let's select the end material node here. And let's go under the options menu. And in here, you're going to see that you have the round edges checkbox that you can enable. Once you do that, well, then your edges are gonna, well, as you can see immediately, they're gonna look a lot more rounded than they did before. And that's what this option here does. It basically simulates those uh, round edges at render time and as you can see that makes a huge difference here and if you want to fine tune the actual radius for those bevels okay you can easily do that you just play around with the radius parameter so maybe if we just lower the radius down to 0 0.1 centimeters well now that looks all that much better and again the point for doing this is that now that these edges are just a little bit rounded just a little bit beveled they're going to be catching realistic highlights once we enable reflections on them okay all right now to finish this material off what we could do is we could just bring in a bitmap for it uh, this uh, pot came with a bitmap that we're supposed to apply on it so let's just set everything up here uh, so it's going to be the zag marble 02 bitmap so we're just going to plug it into the diffuse color slot and we're kind of almost done there so this 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 map could be better mapped onto or this material could be better mapped onto the pot but i think because we're not going to do any close-ups i think it's going to look just fine uh, we don't have any glossiness or a bump map imperfection maps um, to plug in here so we're just not going to worry about those here uh, what we will do however is we will enable reflections okay so kind of like that 
maybe we could lower the glossiness down just a little bit. Remember, this is marble we're working with, so glossiness is going to be pretty high. But I think we're going to be fine with how things are currently set up. Now, obviously, you are encouraged and you are advised to plug in glossiness maps, even if you come up with them on your own. Uh, and do the same with bump maps because those are really the key ingredients to making materials look realistic. But just to save on some time here, we're not going to do that right now. Okay. Um, and then maybe uh, just the next thing, the final thing to set up would be that inner part of the vase uh, or inner part of the pot. Inner part of the pot. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. So we could do that. Uh, let's just select that inner part here. Um, and let's just make this a really uh, metal looking material like let's well not let's not make it metal looking let's make it metal so let's up the reflections here we're going to go with the IOR uh, method here so we're just going to up the IOR to uh, to a high value and then we're also going to lower the diffuse map now we showcased this entire workflow in one of the earlier tutorials so if you're not exactly sure what we're doing uh, do feel free to go back and watch it. Uh, what we could potentially still do here is we could plug in a bump map uh, just uh, to have some of those imperfections in there. We could plug in the glossiness maps, uh, you know, to break up those reflections just a little bit. But we won't really bother showcasing it uh, just because, you know, we've demoed how you can set all of these things up a couple of times already. So that's uh, really a workflow that you're probably really familiar with at this point. Okay. Okay, now before we sign off here, maybe just a little bit of a quick production tip here. If we just open up one of these uh, plant leaf materials here, um, just so you know, just so that we mention it, whenever you're dealing with diffuse bitmaps, okay, uh, these are meant to be loaded in the sRGB color space. Uh, they come loaded in like that as defaults. Same holds true for the bump and glossiness maps. They're supposed to be loaded in as sRGB maps. And if you'll remember, if you'll remember, um, normal maps, however, are supposed to be loaded with the linear color space and the same holds true for displacement maps. So just a little bit of a tip there, okay, just so you know how those things are supposed to be set up. And with that, we'd like to conclude this tutorial. It's been a bit of a long one, but we did cover quite a lot here. And as always, we sincerely hope you've learned something new here. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any praise, constructive criticism, or ideas for our future tutorials, please let us know in the comments below the video. Again, thank you for tuning in and take care, everybody.